the majority of white guys in there, I'm guessing, are probably just, you know, the basic woods. They, they just kind of want to get in and get out and, and and move on with their life. They don't want to run up their shit, uh, get fresh charges and stuff like that. Uh, so a, a very important question for these type of individuals is just trying to do their time and go home. Would there be situations where... Uh, even though they're not affiliated or anything, will there be times where they will be forced to do something they didn't want to other than riding out when it needs to be ride out on the yard or something like that? Any other times that they'll be pressured or forced to do something? All the time. All the time. There's always, there's always going to be something that needs to be handled, uh, and there's going to be the guy that doesn't want to handle it. You know, uh, There's always going to be somebody trying to talk somebody else into it. And it, 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 every scenario is different. Um, you know, when you, if you're young and you got a little stretch, you, you're, you're going to want to handle it. You know, you're going to want to go. Yeah, you're going to want to step go, up. Yeah, you're going to want to go and do a shoot turn. You're going to want to go back there. That way, when you come out, nobody can say nothing to you. You know, yeah. if you ask me funny something, you come up me with a piece, I'm just going to take off on you. That was yeah. my thing. I, I put in a little bit of work in the beginning, handled my business. And then if somebody looked at me funny, I'd just give them the cold stare. And I already knew the guys. You you would get out there and you would see it, you know? You would see the dudes that were on the dope. They didn't want to leave the yard because they're staying high out there. But shit needs to get handled. Those dudes are the soldiers. Well, if if they can't talk somebody into handling it or pressure somebody into handling it, they got to handle it, you know? Yeah. It's like, well, dude owes this, this amount of money. He needs to be removed from the yard. Well, he owes that amount of money because he's on dope. You don't see me strung out, you know? So when, when them dudes come for their money and it's time to ride, I'll be there on the front line fucking handling business, scraping your ass off the ground. But I'm not going to go stab that dude for you, you know? Yeah. And if you ask me again, I'm fucking taking off on you right there. That's it. We're both going to the hole and we'll answer for it back there. Because why, yeah. why would I let somebody put a piece in my hand, you know? Yeah. It yeah. happened. Yeah. So it, it, there's, I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen because it does. And a lot of it is overzealous. A lot of dudes will open their mouth. They'll talk about, oh, I'm this or I'm that, and then you'll get called on it. So a lot of times it's not just, oh, this this quiet kid over here getting pressured into doing something. It's this loud mouth dude over here running his mouth or this dude fucking tattooing solid ass white dude or, or something. You know what I mean? All of a sudden he's got a swastika on his arm. Well, now you need to go fucking represent that swastika. So you better yeah. go step, you know? So th that's how it kind of comes about. So a lot of times if you're just a wood or whatever and you come into prison, yeah, you do need to handle your business. You do need to you know, handle yourself accordingly. And especially when it's mandatory. If it's mandatory yard and we got to come out there, you, you got to be out there. You got to be ready to fight. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You can't be, you can't let, you just, it, it's prison. It is what it is. So my first shoot term, all right, I got an older homeboy on the yard and uh, I just moved in with a new Sally. And the older homeboy, he doesn't really have my car, but he has a lot of influence for my car. So mm -hmm. him and my Sally kind of have exchange of words over, oh, it was a personal issue. So my older homeboy tried to pressure me into taking out my Sally. He wanted me to check my Sally. And I told him, no. I told like him, put the steel in him and everything. Yeah, just straight up, no. You ain't telling me to check my Sally. I, 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 was, I witnessed the exchange of words. So it wasn't, and he put it to me a different way initially. I, I witnessed it. I seen what happened. I said, nah, my Sally told you, fuck you. You guys, if, if you got a personal problem, handle it. You know what I mean? So it kind of went back and forth. And then I ended up just removing that dude from the yard. But it, it kind of like, the way it happened, it, it, it was weird. But the dude tried to pressure me, you know? And then I got a, another one of my homeboys. And he was like, well, if that dude ain't going to do it, just go sock him in his face and tell him to roll it up. And then, and that's kind of, and, and then he explained it. I'm just like 19 years old at this time. And uh, yeah. he explained it to me, and he's like, look, if you sock that dude in his face and you tell him to roll it up and he doesn't take off on you, he's a punk. If he rolls it up, you're automatically validated. You know what I mean? The dude the dude didn't do what he was supposed to do. You did what you were supposed to do. So I ran up on the dude, rocked his world, told him to roll it up, and he kind of like looked at me like, like, what the fuck? I don't know if he was dazed or what, you know? And I told him, hey, you need to roll it up. And he, he stood up so that, I, you know, and he like, oh, no, no. And he started walking towards the program office. So then I picked it up with my homeboys and I walked around the yard and uh, I can kind of see him and he goes over to his building. He passed the program. He never talked to the cops and he's standing in front of the, the building. And then I walk to the other side of the yard and I'm just watching him. I'm kind of standing by the handball courts and the buildings are set up in a, like a, 
big circle, you know, all the way around the edge of the yard. And then each, each building has its own tower. And then the other side, you'll have another tower facing. So you've got five buildings with towers and then you got a main gun tower. So you got six eyes plus cops all throughout the yard. And uh, my homeboy goes and I can kind of see him talking to him. And I already know what the conversation is. Like, you know, let that kid just run up on you and handle this, you know, because basically if he goes back in there, he's washed up, he's done. He doesn't yeah. stand up. Himself. He can't come back and program on a good yard again. You know, you can't let someone PC you up. You just can't, you know. Yeah. So so he kind of he, he, he figures it out. He talks to the dude. He starts walking towards me in the middle of the yard. So I meet him halfway and he kind of gives me the, yo, hey, let's go over here where they can't see us thing, you know. So I yeah. go to turn around and I, I was like, man, they can't fucking see us. And I turn back and I look and he's getting ready to steal on me. So I kind of just moved and then I just started. I mean, at this time, I'm working out pretty hard. And I surprised myself and I beat the fuck out of this guy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I beat the fuck out of this guy. I put him down and I told him stay down because I don't want to get pepper sprayed. You know, and uh, I've been pepper sprayed a few times in juvenile hall. And it's, it's not fun. And uh, so I, I, I got him down the first time and I back up and then I see the cops start to come out of the, each building. They're running out of the yards going down. And uh, I told him stay down, stay down. And he, he fucking got back up again and I just cracked him one good uppercut and it like just crumbled him. And luckily I got down, everything was good. Uh, I didn't get pepper sprayed, but it was kind of interesting to hear the cop like, man, hey, you know fucking Kung Fu or something? So <laughs> I must yeah, He probably that. enjoyed watching that a little bit. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. It was interesting. But so they take us back to the this is something that always scared me about prison is the blood exchange. So I had his I knocked his tooth into my pinky and they had me cuffed up in the in the, in the program office, you know, and they want to take pictures and all that. So the, the medical comes by and all that. And I'm telling him, hey, you know, I need to wash my fucking hands, you know, like. I don't know what this dude's got. Every, so prison population in California, the time that I was locked up, half the population had hepatitis. Hepatitis, half yeah. So I don't want to catch nothing, you know? And uh, it was kind of a sad situation. They let me sit in there for like an hour with this dude's blood all over my hands. I couldn't do shit, couldn't wash my hands. Never even showed up to take the pictures, you know? Yeah, that's nasty, man. Uh, and that's something I warn people about all the time, man. You know, you get in a fight. I can guarantee one of those fights, man, someone's going to be loaded with some kind of disease, my friend. You can lose. You can win and still lose. That's crazy. What prison did that jump off at? Was that Ironwood that's, still? That, that's at Ironwood. I spent six years at Ironwood. So uh, after that, they gave me uh, they gave me a year in the shoe for that. Uh, it was They gave me a bat. It was a one-on-one, -on -one too. So this is – they usually don't give you battery for one-on-one. -on -one. But I guess I cracked the dude's skull or something. So they gave me a GBI enhancement and ended up getting a gear Damn. for that. Yeah, it was fucked up. You and, got a uh, gang enhancement, you said? No, a GBI. Great bottle GBI. Of oh, okay. I thought you said gang yeah. enhancement. All right. I thought the DA was going to pick it up and everything, you know? It, it was it was a little bit of a scary situation for me. Yeah, so that damn right. I went, I went to the hole. Um, the hole was interesting. And um, yeah, the, I, liked, I, I liked the hole a little bit. Um, just... It was, it's, it's hard to explain, but. Uh, a little more relaxing? Somewhat. Yeah. Somewhat, when it comes more. to politics, maybe? Yeah. But yeah. it was just interesting, you know, because everything's, the, each hole is different, but the one in Ironwood, we had these, uh, they're still perforated doors. I was watching your, uh, I was watching your video this morning with. Uh, was it? Joey. Yeah, Joey from the Valley. Free from Fetters Grove, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I seen you showed those the perforated doors. Yeah, so that was Pelican Bay. Yeah. So if, most people in prison, they, they do the sign language. Well, right there, with your whole door being a window, it kind of created their own sign language. So you spell the whole word out, you know what I mean? So like yeah. if you had, uh, you know, if you would, if, it, if I would write my name, I would start and I would just draw a K across my door. And then that's how everybody was, you know, so you could sit on your door all day and just watch TV and, you know, be in everybody's conversation, you know, because you're yeah. going to see everybody. Uh, and just the fishing, you kind of learn, you know, there's a lot of fishing going on right there. But uh, yeah, did you have to do the whole uh, waking up, roll call, all that yeah. in, the, in the shoe back there? Was that pretty weird to you? It, it, I kind of it, it kind of was nice. It was a little camaraderie, you know, it, it kept everybody together. Um it was interesting. Yeah, the, usually it was, a, I think it was the morning shift change. So like a 6 a.m., they would do shift change. And then that was kind of like RQ, you know, and then the, usually the homies would go off first. They would do their roll call. 
and then we would do ours. And there was a couple times that even the blacks would have their own roll call. They really? would do uh, like the swah. I think it was like Swahili or something like that. And, yeah. and uh, they would do their little respect thing, and it was cool. And then yeah. every now and then you would have uh, the PCs would chirp up, and those dudes would be disrespecting you through the yard, the door, and just yelling. Oh, the PCs are getting wild in there, huh? They were wild in there. <laughs> that's the only time you really have, you know, you ever see them. And I mean, this dude, this PC in the in the in the cell next to you, you know, just a couple months ago, he was the dude was mainline, you know. He was walking yeah. the line. All of everybody in that pin came from the pin, so it's it's just an interesting flow how it, how it went. How many solid individuals you see get get wrapped up, man, in man, the PC too many, game? Too many, too fucking many. That it's it's real heartbreaking when you're out there with somebody, you know, and you, you look up to them, you know, they 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 they're schooling you on the prison politics, you know, and you go and all of a sudden there's mandatory yard, you know, and you're a fucking skinny ass kid out there you know slinging them with these fucking 200 pound fucking just killers Monsters. you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. it's just all said and done you're laying on the ground and you're looking back at your homeboys and they're way the fuck back there you know and it's just like what the fuck you know and i'm not saying everybody but i had a lot of a lot of eye-opening you know experiences where i'm like man you know i used to look up to that dude you know he had his letters he had that swazi across his fucking neck you know he was yeah. you know this was a killer and People look, yeah, guys, guys look up to that shit, man. I mean, it's just like any movie or music. You idolize that shit, you know. You say, "Oh man, that's tough." You know, I want to be tough too. Badass, yeah. You know, so you're out there being a badass, and then you look back and you're like, "Man, that's just fucking posing." You know, I'm not saying everybody is, but you catch them, you catch them all. You know. Yeah. So in Ironwood, I uh, after that shoe term, um, I got, I got, I landed on another yard and. I started programming. Uh, I ended up getting my GED and uh, started taking college courses. They had a college program at Ironwood when I was there, and it was like a correspondence. They actually did a, uh, a National Geographic special, and uh, you'll see it's with uh, Jim White and uh, another dude, uh, Roger. They're all on there. They kind of do interviews. The dude that ran the program, he was actually a Jewish guy. So this is interesting. So you don't see a lot of Jewish white dudes in prison. And this dude, speaking of the AB, he actually had the green light to walk the line. He walked back before they got taken off the line. So they already gave the dude the green light. So none of the skinheads messed with them or nothing like that. He actually had a skinhead celly at one time, this Jewish dude. But this guy, just for what he was doing, he was doing good for everybody. He had a purpose, you know. Um, yeah. But the dude, the dude, he had a good case as well. Somebody ended up raping his daughter. He bells the dude out. Fucking shows up on the, on the, uh, the court steps and smoked him right there on the court steps. So wow. I mean, yeah, you can't do nothing but respect a guy. You know what I mean? So I Whoa. think that's probably why he had he had the green light to walk the line is he handled his business, you know. That's but crazy. This is the guy he that bonded him out. Guy. I gotta look that story up. I wonder if it made yeah, news. You know, look that up, Jim White. Yeah, that's he's crazy. The one, he's the one running the, the 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 program for all the. So he was getting uh, proctored. Uh, it was a Palo, Palo Verde Community College is what we were going through, which was a, a community college in the community out in Blythe, right there outside the prison. And we partnered with them and we were getting government grants. The, the government was paying for our books. So we would get all these books would come in and then we would share the books and then we would do correspondence courses. And then when it came time to do like our, our midterms or finals, whatever the case may be, we would get proctored outside uh, free staff come in. And they would go to the classroom and then we would go in and we would be able to take our test because yeah. you couldn't take a test. You know, obviously, we would be cheating if we weren't going to do it in front of a proctor, you know? Yeah, that's cool, so man. Kind of cool program right there. Yeah, it sounds like y'all had uh, or you've seen a few of the good program sides to California. Uh, I, man, yeah, I, ain't, I, I ain't seen no damn programs over here in Virginia, man. I'm not I'm talking about not one damn shit of nothing. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like just prison cell and that's it. And it was crazy. So what do you like? Do you guys even have like assignments or I mean? I'm, no, we don't have nothing. Man. It's like I could wake up in a level four prison. I was waking up, drink coffee, play poker for eight hours straight. Oh, <laughs> that's it. I mean, I might go work out or something, but there are prisons in Virginia that have programs. You know, build furniture for colleges, uh, yeah, license yeah. plates, stuff like that. But the stuff that you're uh, they do have an uh agricultural thing where they have greenhouses these are low level prisons though where they have the state farms where they grow all the vegetables for the prisons uh they do have that stuff but 
you know, if you're a violent offender or anything higher than a level two, you ain't gonna see none of this shit. And if you do, you're gonna it's you're gonna be on a waiting list that takes five, ten years to even yeah. get into the program. So, but no, I, California was pretty good about that when I first fell. I mean, we had a uh, silk screening. You'll see yeah. a lot of guys out right now. They're making these guys all got their t-shirt companies and shit. Yeah. They all learned that in prison. Uh, we had a program, a uh, Braille program show up for a while. These guys, they were doing a translation for the blind. Like they would do a like wow. the shit for the blind. Uh, there was a lot of cool little programs. Uh, see programs like that is what we need. Screen printing, welding, stuff like that. The guys can yeah. actually go out and actually start their own damn business with you know what i mean not just the yeah. boss you could start your own business with these jobs uh well they, they were cut they cut all those programs and they got rid of the free staff as the years went on and they were getting yeah. less and less but those programs is, it's because in california you can't they have status it's like a it's when you first get in if you come over and, and you don't you, you didn't have a job for wherever you came from you're gonna have they call it a to b status which means you can't come out on the weekends you can't come out at night you're basically Damn. in your cell if you're not programming, if you're not, if you don't have a job assignment or you don't have a, a, a vocational assignment, you're you're basically only going to come out like a certain amount of time every day. So and this is for everyone. This is for everyone. So, so typically, yeah, the like, state will give you or assign you something to do. Yes, you will get an assignment. So usually, when you roll up, they'll, they'll, they'll send you through a classification. You'll be on a classification roll. They'll assess you. Then you come out, um, and they'll. Within a week or so, you usually get hit with a, a, a little, I think they call it like a docket or whatever, and it'll be a job assignment. You know, you'll be a, either a line server in the kitchen, or a yard member, uh, you could be a porter, um, or one of the educational programs, depending on what, you know, your best needs are or whatever was open at the time. And they don't ask you what you might want at all, for real? They just uh, kind of put it on you, what you're going to do? They might at some prisons, but I, even if they ask you, it's like I mean, when you go to reception, they ask you what prison you want to go to. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They just, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I guess it's, it's nice to be asked, but they don't care. It's just going to happen the way it's going to happen. But that's wild to think that the state, because see, like to be in a kitchen crew uh, in, let's say, a level three or two prison, you literally got to file out, fill out the form. And then hope that they even come back to you with a reply saying, yeah, you got the job. You know, uh, they never just assign you the, the kitchen crew or any job over here in Virginia. That's wild. Uh, so everyone is working or going to vocational. And the ones that are working, do they get paid for doing it, even though they're kind of forced to do yeah. it? Well, you get There is pay numbers. Uh, but for the most part, most of them aren't pay numbers. But like, if, say if you go in the kitchen and your you know, your bottom pay number will be eight cents an hour, so you're making eight cents an hour, um, and then if you have restitution, they're taking fifty five percent of that. Um, but you can make all the way up to like a dollar an hour in the IDL if you're in a lower level, the MA, yeah. you know, where you're doing construction work and stuff like that. What jobs would you not get paid for, like cleaning in house in the block or something? Yeah. So basically, all the porters. Uh, anybody inside the, the day room cleaning, only the top, the top, the, the number one guy will have a pay number. Uh, all the yard crew guys, only the top guy will have the pay number. Um, just certain certain ones, but for the most part, everybody's got a pay number, especially if you're like in a maintenance crew or plumber or electrician or something like that. You might be making, you know, 30, 40 cents an hour, which is okay. a decent pay number. What, uh, what do you think would be the best job to have in prison uh well when I, I i was a cook for a while well, i was a cook on several yards but i like to be the cook um i like breakfast so i, I went in as a skinny kid you know and you, you go in there you see all the older homeboys are like oh yeah you know you gotta you're skinny until that bone on your wrist is gone or or you ain't got hood till you could hold your id with your chest so i would always be working in the kitchen and, and protein is everything so in our you know we had the the non-fat milk you know nine grams of protein you got your hard boiled eggs, you got five to six grams of protein, you got your beans, all protein. So that's that's what I would do is I was I was get I was to the point where I was drinking the I would take the pancake mix and mix it with water. I'd be drinking that shit just insane. everything. I, it was insane, but uh, th I tried, I mean I put a lot of work into putting on size, you know, throughout yeah. the years, and that's the only way you could do it, unless you got money and you're going to canteen. Because yeah. the two thousand calorie diet that they're state issuing you just isn't there, you know? Yeah. Especially if you're uh, driving every day. Yeah, they didn't do no uh, tuna or not. I know the Muslims over here 
had a lot of tuna being given no, to them. But the Muslim, uh, they would get the. Uh, they did. They we uh we lost our pork they, because of the Muslims, and then uh, yeah, but uh, they would do their Ramadan, and uh, it was kind of cool because I, I worked in the kitchen and they would get fried chicken every day. You yeah. Know? And uh, I mean, chicken was one of the only real meats we were really getting. You know, I mean, we didn't get today or nothing like that. For a while, we were getting roast beef, which was a, a cool thing. Um, but when they, they switched all our like our hamburger over to like 50 percent soy and all kinds of weird shit. So yeah. the chicken was one of the, the, the main things we got where it was actual real meat. But they would okay. get that for a month. They would get so they would chicken. get chicken a lot. Yeah. Well, just the Ramadan guys for the Muslims. Yeah. On their, uh, on their month. I think it's October yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, damn, I knew a couple guys. I used to look forward to Ramadan because they, they did, just didn't eat some of the stuff that they gave them. And, you know, uh, religious faiths in prison, they tend to get some kind of, some exotic foods every once in a while. And, you know, uh, a lot of people would choose that faith just to get them foods, you know. Uh, but, you, but they got to play that role good. Uh but yeah, not in California. I'm sure California is a lot different when it comes to that. That's kind of like left, life or death. We play games with they're, that shit. They're pretty, they're pretty big on religious, uh, religious stuff. You know, like the, the natives. They got they yeah. got sweat lodges. Uh, those dudes are they got it going on. They got these. Uh, I I don't know exactly what it is, but a lot of them will wear a pouch around their neck, and the cops weren't allowed to mess with it because it's sacred. Yeah. So the dudes would run around with a little bit of weed in their pouch on their yard. And they couldn't get really fucked with, you know. Oh damn, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> they go in that sweat lodge for sure. <laughs> yeah, I never got, I never got invited. Uh, but I've seen a couple of white dudes get. You got to be invited to that, you know. Um, yeah, and, uh, I kind of wanted to just, to just, just experience it, check it out, you know. But you hear about it, it's, it's kind of like I guess if you enter, it's kind of disrespectful to leave yeah. before it's done. So kind of a scary thing too, you know. You don't want to. That's yeah. Shock. Yeah, I ain't never even heard of sweat lodges until I interviewed uh, Smiley. Uh, is oh, what yeah, it goes yeah. by. He 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 said he was the first one that mentioned that to me. I never even knew or heard of any of that stuff in prison. Those guys will be over there. They uh, it's kind of a it's like in between the yards. It's not on the yard, so it's in between. Like there'll be like uh, so most prison the normal prisons over here we usually have four yards A, B, C, and D, and then uh. uh in between each so they'll have two sweat lodges in between two one here and then yeah. one there and they'll go and sometimes they would go it would be a thing where the guys from that yard and this yard would go so that's kind of like an unheard of thing where it's easy you can get communication you know you don't have to you don't have to risk throwing a kite over or sending a kite and that kite get you know if you're sending some, some vital information you don't want it to be seen yeah yeah uh and people do that all the time, going to church and mass and all that stuff. It's just a way to get stuff across. Uh, and a lot of people, they don't. They just go for their, you know, religious purposes. But, yeah, you know, one thing I have noticed, though, over here in, in prison in Virginia, white dudes love the Native American stuff, man. It's like they were completely into it. Is it, is it like that out there in California? I've seen – I've seen – um, we're kind of intertwined with the Natives a little bit. They, they – you know, there's 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 natives that are run white, or there's you know, they're either half white or half native. You know, you see a lot of dudes named like Redwood, and so you know, you you see a lot of the intertwine. You know, they're kind of like they're an other, but they're not like it's 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 hard to explain. They kick it. so like if you were to go into a building, the building it's got you, you go through the sally port, and it's you either look to the left, there's going to be a bunch of tables and buildings like a day room over here, and then you look to the right, there's going to be another day room over there and then that's basically the separation you're going to have you know the south siders and the whites the homies and the whites and then the the blacks you know and the others would it be like the asians the islanders you know stuff like that they kind of tend to kick it more with the blacks on that side but the indians are a different other and they kind of kick it on our side that makes yeah. sense it does make sense uh well let me ask you this man there's so many groups in prison so many groups and uh, there was always like, I don't know if there was one for you or not, but there was always a group that seemed to be catered to more or got more than other groups. Is there, is there anything like that that you see like, uh, just catered to and, and it just, it just seems like they get extra stuff than someone else might not have gotten. Um, I mean, it always happens. Yeah. So you'll get, you'll get a cop in your pocket or not really in your pocket, but just kind of, you know, you may. You may get a cop that's cool, 
you know, and you may be able to get a little extra something or a little leeway, but well, here's a good one for you. I got one. So, so uh, I'm a kid. Uh, I'm, I think I'm like 18, 19 years old at the time. Me and my celly, uh, we're cooking lightning all the time. And uh, I'm doing dope at the time. This is, I'm still fucking up at this time. Um, and we do, that's how we're basically supporting our habit is we would, we, would, we would make a batch of wine and then we would cook it off. And then a tumbler is 20 bucks. So I would trade two tumblers, two eight ounces for a 50 paper. And that was yeah. kind of like the, the go down. And then we would split the 50 paper or whatever, you know, we would cook all night, you know, cause it would take all night to cook a lot of whiskey. And we would have this cop, he would come by all the time. And we had, we had it pretty good with him. He knew we were cooking whiskey. We weren't causing any problems. He just said, don't drink in the day room. That was it, you know? So we shot him a little bag one time and try our whiskey. And then my Steli writes him a recipe, right? He's like, look, this is what you need to do. This cop wants to make his own wine. So he sits him, he writes him down a recipe. This cop goes, is a CO, not a cop, but a correctional officer. Yeah. And he goes home with all the other correctional officers, makes a batch. They all get drunk on it. And he brings us the tumbler and we tried it. His shit was fire. It was better than ours. Oh, yeah. damn. I'm trying to see, like, my, he gave I've us seen. Some lightning. He gave us some lightning. That That's was a, cool, man. Uh, that was cool. I've seen people cook all kinds of wine, okay? But I've never seen uh, the clear. Is that what y'all are talking about when you say whiskey? Is it the clear? The or clear, is it the. the white yeah, the That's white lightning. Called. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've never seen anyone cook like that. My homeboy Grizzy, he knows how to cook it. And he was about to show me before he got locked back it, up. He pretty, should be out it's soon. It's pretty easy, you know. What we would do is we would just put uh, – we would take – so it was an eight-to-one ratio is how I ran it. And uh, we would put it in a bucket. So if we threw a gallon in there, uh, that's eight-to-one. You're only going to pull one tumbler per gallon. So if you got five gallons in there, you're going to pull five tumblers. What the hell would you use to put five gallons in? So it's a, well, it was a cup. So you could buy a tumbler. It's eight ounces. So eight ounces or eight times eight is 64, 64, just mathematical. You just figure it out piece by piece, you know? No, I'm saying like, uh, what were you using to put five gallons worth of liquid in? Oh, plastic trash bags, plastic trash bags. All right. I used the, uh, I don't know if y'all have them in California, the milk dispensers or they had the big milk bags where you could just, you know, put your cup under in the chow hall and it dispenses milk in the morning time. Do y'all have them? No, we had a uh, we got like the carton of milks like you get at school. Oh, okay. Yeah, we yeah. used to. Yeah, them things had big ass bags, man, and we would cook them in there, nice thick bags with nozzles sticking out of them already. Uh, so you use trash bags. Uh, yeah, we would use trash bags. You set it up in like a, a apple box, and you get like a like old tuna can is how I would do it, and poke a bunch of holes in the bottom of it and use it like a cheese grater. And uh, they stopped giving us citrus fruit because citrus really kicks. So we were getting the apple a day, keeping us real, uh, real healthy. And I would take the apples and I would grate them up and then just make like a, a, like a chunky sauce. And that would be the base. And then you would take anything with tomato. Tomato is really good. So whether it would be the ketchup, and I, like I said, I worked in the kitchen, so I would have action. I worked in the morning, but we would always swap. I would hide stuff in the morning. The night guys would hide stuff in the night. And we would swap our shit. So I would be able to get like spaghetti sauce. Um, I was getting yeast. Uh, potato skins, uh, bread crust, anything with yeast in it was good. Um, I heard that tomato it. sauce really speeds up the process. Tomatoes kick. Tomatoes where it's at. So, and especially if you can get anything without preservatives. So, like if you're throwing ketchup packets and shit like that, we're throwing all those preservatives. Yeah, it it's going to slow it down. Yeah. Yeah. So you got. But to, it, would be, you, it would be crazy. We'd have a, the under the bed, and it would be blowing up so hard you would see the let the bed, and then we would run it. You'd run a hose, so you like they had these big, uh, like you just said, like the, the milk jugs. But we had these big coolers. We'd put the Kool Aid in, and they'd have a rubber seal that would run. Oh, around. okay. And it was like a little tube. So I would take that, and make the hoses, and then you'd run a breather into a like a a, a soap jug full of different good smelling soap. That way, the carbonation, because you could smell the carbon, the carbonated or the uh, was it the CO two. It creates CO2. When the bacteria eats the sugar, it shits out CO2 and alcohol. Yeah. It blows up. So either you're going to burp your shit or you're going to create a bubbler system because that's going to blow up and you're going to have you basically pruno all over the tier, you know? Yeah, yeah. I ain't we'll never seen that happen. Yeah, we create a little system. but uh, And then cooking it off, you just put it in a bag. You just create a bag. You run your cord like a stinger. I don't know if you guys have stingers over there. Yeah, we, we have- use stingers. Yeah, we used to have stingers, and they took them from us after a couple people got stabbed because they were like the stinger was like a perfect handle 
and then it had two rods and then it kind of went around so it was like almost a perfect knife you know they just yeah, oh so uh, they uh, actually gave you stingers like well, you the system to, no you'd buy them on the canteen but oh oh <laughs> no we have never had stingers like that we made stingers out of toenail clippers <laughs> yeah i would make them out of uh, can lids I'd wow dude can lids, and then i take the uh the rubber couplet from our shower bags in between them and then just any cord any old cord you know yeah but i've seen a, a a dude they were doing it with the uh, belt buckles and i homeboy went blind from it yeah wait what Fucking do you mean belt buckles like uh, like you know, like the Boy Scout belt buckles. I don't, that's how what we get it. Like state issue belt buckle, like Boy Scout. You know those yeah. ones. Yeah, I had them. Color with like the, with like the little bronze shiny front end of it. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, there was a dude cooking with that, and he fucking ended up going blind. So I don't know if the metal like emitted. What something do you mean or, cooking with it? Oh, he used it as a stinger. He, he was using the uh, two belt buckles as a stinger to cook his whiskey. Oh. Off. Yeah. And he so went blind. He yeah. My, might have been. I don't know, man. Two dudes over at Ironwood catch a botulism when I was there, too. Fuck those guys. They airlifted them out and everything. Fuck they, them up. What was it? What was it? A what? Botulism. botulism. What's that? What's it's that? Like a rare, it's like a rare bacteria disease, but it's, I guess it's super serious. It's something to do with, like, rotten potatoes. So there's a, uh, there's a fine line when you're fucking with bacteria, you know? Do yeah. you want to get drunk or... Or never risky. knew that. Never knew that. Uh, I never. That was never my thing to wine, man. I've never been a big drinker. Uh, maybe in high school, but you know who wasn't. It but, wasn't. Uh, it really wasn't my thing either. But uh, you know, I wasn't about to ask. Good my hustle. To pay for some dope, you know. So if I yeah. wanted to get high, that's what I was doing, you know. Yeah, it's a good hustle, man. Especially what you said, twenty dollars a tumbler. Twenty yeah. dollars a tumbler. Ladies and gentlemen, twenty bucks in the system. That's a chunk. That's like a hundred dollars, you know, out here in the streets, if not a little more. Yeah. Um, what do you got going on, man? You got anything going on? You you told me before this you have a YouTube channel. You kind of do reviews or something like that. Yeah, so I, I I got a little YouTube channel, Kevin. You have Kevin. Um, it's we it's me and my wife. We just cruise around Southern California. We we got a couple electric vehicles. She's got a couple electric scooters. I got an electric skateboard, a one wheel, and uh, we like to hike and just explore. You know. The one wheel electric skateboards, man. I need to try that. Yeah, it's pretty fun, man. I, you know, when I was a kid, I used to skate a lot. And uh, after, you know, going to prison as a kid, you know, you got that taken away from you. So it was kind of interesting getting back on one after all these years, you know. So I'm, I'm on a longboard now, which is a little different, but it's, it's fun, man. It's See, fun. man, I'm we, not- I think me, you, and a lot of people think the same way. When we get locked up at 17, 18 years old, because when I got out, I just wanted to do the shit that I was, like, kind of doing before I got locked up. You know what I mean? I just wanted to surf. I wanted to try to get back into surfing and all that stuff. So, I mean, I I got my surfboard right here behind me, man. And, you know, it's just like a lot of guys tend to do that. It's like our our childhood was stolen, and we kind of are trying to adult but still enjoy what we missed at the same time, you know? Uh, But that's awesome. A one-wheel skateboard. I mean, is it hard to control? It's it's actually not that bad uh yeah. you gotta go on the google or go on my channel and check it out you gotta check it out i will out. man it's i will yeah and what's the channel name again one more time for the people kevin yeah kevin no honestly everything's going great man and uh that's that's something that i kind of wanted to touch base on a little bit is you know it's you know you know i think a lot of people probably watch your channel and, and they're probably a lot like we were when we were young you know we we idolized you know the dudes that were we thought we're tough or we're, we're doing big things, you know, and then the prison scene, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's not really something to idolize or it's not something that's cool because once you get there and once you're doing it day after day, that shit wears on you. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it gets old quick, man. Yeah, It gets real old, real quick. And it's not the spot to be, you know, none of that shit fucking matters. None of it matters. All those years were wasted. So when I got out, you know, like you said, when I, all my life, I wanted to go surfing. I never got to go surf. I still haven't gone surfing. But when yeah. I first got out, I was I was determined to do right because I already knew, you know, I've, I've already seen so many people come and go, come and go, come and go. It's kind of like, fuck, what, wh- where do I fit in this picture? Am I going to be this guy or am I going to be that guy? You yeah. Know? And, you know, and a lot of people there go, you know, like in California, it's it's kind of hard because our politics are pretty tight, you know, so you can get caught up real easy. You know, people get they get caught up for stupid shit. 
So it's really not the spot to be, you know, I mean, you can come in and you're thinking, you're thinking a certain way. And this dude over here, that's a fucking dirt bag. is thinking a totally different way. You know, it just, cause you bumped heads. Shit could go sour for me. Yeah. You know? Some people ain't making it out of there, man. You know, a lot of people ain't, they're losing their life or, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're getting got, their time, got, they're getting their time got, tricked got, up. I got a homeboy right now. He's been in county for five years. I met him while we were locked up, and he was a good dude. He was he was kind of like me, you know. He he didn't fit in in there, you know. After a while, I just didn't fit in anymore, you know. And uh, it was a good thing. I was I was I didn't want to fit in anymore, you know. Yeah. And it was kind of like me. And he got out a year like a year before me. And uh, when I got out, you know, he kind of was you know a good influence. He was out here. He was doing what he was supposed to be doing. And Five years back, man, he got into an accident and uh, over here in Palm Springs and an older couple pulled out in front of him. He was going faster than the speed limit and they pulled in front of him and he side blasted him, took the dude's life. And, and now they're trying to give him murder, you know, and it's it's kind of a sad situation. It's like, man, you know, you get in an accident, it can happen to anybody, you know, kind of yeah. eye opening. Like, anybody, man, anybody, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it's it's none of that, you know, and it's yeah. just... This person lost their life, and now he's going to lose his as well. Yeah. And, you know, I tell people that all the time to watch my show. Yeah, it ain't just for anyone who might be facing time or has already done time, man. You don't know how easy it is to get locked the hell up for years. Definitely, definitely, you know. Uh, honestly, the number one thing is, is is if you're watching out there and you're on dope, man, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a, If you're on there just – if you're trying to recover from dope and you're taking another substance, it's still dope. Um, you guys, I grew up on dope, man. It's not the spot. It's not where it's at. Everybody in prison, everybody in prison is on dope or was on dope or the dope created the scenario that put them in that situation that got them there. 99 out of a hundred guys are in there because of dope. So if you're on dope, yeah, you might not be doing this. You might not be doing that, but that dope is compromising your morals. It's compromising your values and you're doing shit you wouldn't be doing otherwise. And uh, my neighborhood's going through it right now, man. If you go on my channel, you'll see two different videos of two different dope fiends trying to invade my neighborhood. I smacked them both up and sent them on their way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got to watch that. <laughs> yeah, shit's getting serious over here in Riverside, man. I, I ride up and down the river bottom trail, the bike trail, uh, regularly. And um, just the last six months, I've seen the homeless population down there fucking grow tenfold. There's complete cities uh yeah i, I want to do some, some some videos on it and i kind of been i had a really nice conversation with the dude that i flashed on a couple of weeks ago i busted him just down the street from my pad starting a dumpster on fire i rolled up i've been patrolling like a cop it's fucking ridiculous um i roll up on these dudes and i just question them now but i roll up and we pull in this parking lot and the dumpster's on fire so i stop and i get out and there's a dude back there and he's trying to put it out you know so I'm like, oh, what's going on? He's like, oh, someone threw a cigarette butt right here while I was digging through the trash. And I'm like, nobody threw a fucking cigarette butt. You started this fire. And he like got all scared. And I was like, look, dude, and I can see already, you know, he's got ink all over him. You know, so I'm like, did you just get out, bro? You know what arson carries? Come on, man. So finally, I told him just to shake the spot. But I see him the other day. And uh, man, he, he kind of starts building a report. And he starts telling me who's selling dope in the neighborhood and all this other shit, you know. And here I am. You know, I used to be the fucking, I used to be the burglar. You know, I used to be the, 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 the fucking dope fiend. I used to be that guy. Now, yeah. I want to be the guy that go kicks that motherfucker's door in and tells him to get the fuck out of my neighborhood. You know, I'm not going to play that shit anymore. So, yeah, man. Well, really I mean, and you know, a lot of people, they would feel the exact same way if they either yeah. been through it or they lost a loved one to it. When it's in your neighborhood, it's a different story. And if you can do anything to uh, help stop your neighborhood from going to the wayside man and hey more power to you man because it's your community man it's where your family yeah. your kids when you have kids where they're going to grow up and so forth and so on so yeah man you got to protect what's yours and where you're living at some places they're already overrun man it's almost impossible to fix but man, uh bad. You, it seems like you got a somewhat decent neighborhood to defend over there man but don't do nothing too crazy you know how that shit can get too <laughs> You know, got to yeah. remember, the, we're, you're still ex-con, and even though you might been helping a situation, uh, they don't care. You know the drill. Um, you yeah. Know? It's uh, a scary spot, yeah. I yeah. can't carry weapons, you know, so it's all hands. 
Yeah, you know? for sure, man. So, uh, and, and putting hands on someone, even if it is, you know, it could still trick up somehow, some way. So it's a dangerous life out there, man, but still doing something positive and, and trying to keep this stuff away from you is a good way to do it. Uh, but yeah, man, like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed this interview. Uh, and I hope to have you back on here shortly, man, if that's cool with you. Definitely, definitely. I'd appreciate being back on. That's what's up, man. And ladies and gentlemen, like I said before, I'll keep all the links pinned in the comment section and description for you to follow his Instagram or uh, his YouTube and all that good stuff. And, uh, man, just be easy out there, you know. Enjoy the rest of your beautiful Sunday, all right, my friend?